Okay, <clears throat> the purpose of this mini iLab or lab video is to unpack some of the more confusing aspects of iLab 5. <clears throat> In iLab 5, they give you this massive table with all these column numbers and names in it. It's full of normal form violations. We don't have to get into detail as to what those are, but just say you've got problems such as instructor ID, instructor first name and last name, does not depend on student ID if this was all in the same table and this was the primary key student ID. This belongs in its own table. <clears throat> then you've got other uh, data in here that also belongs in its own, in its own table, and, and you'll see this as we develop this. You've been given business rules that suggest which tables are related to which, and whether it's optional or mandatory that they participate in a relationship. Another key concept is this statement here, courses are scheduled for a term and given a section. The point I want to make is that a course is different from a section. A course is a concept, it's a course code, it's a list of learning objectives, but it doesn't tell you when the course is offered as a class. See, a section does that. A section is a class. It has an associated course, but it also has a time and a room and a professor. So that's something to, important to distinguish. In common language at DeVry, we don't distinguish between courses and sections. Or, <clears throat> but in this lab, you have to be precise in your language and realize that a section is a specific offering at a time and place of a specific course. So how do you design this data database? <clears throat> First thing you do is you, excuse me, <coughs> you identify what the entities are in this database. And it's student, course, instructor, room, and section. If you go through this here, you'll see those naturally fall. Student, course, instructor, room, and then they told you that courses are actually made up in sections. So those are the one, two, three, four, five basic entities that you need, barring any junction tables you might end up with. And then you have to read the rules and kind of read between the lines and think about how it works at DeVry, determine the nature of the relationship to get this matrix. Each course is associated with many sections, and each section is associated with one course. This makes sense, is that BIS 245 can be offered at 20 campuses around North America, um, and this session, and online as well. But each section is associated with only one course. When you click on the course that we're taking right now, you don't find you're also studying English in it. That's a separate class or separate section. So it's a one-to-many instructor section. Each instructor will teach many different sections. I have three this session. But when you go into a section, you only see one professor helping you get through the course. Now, each room would have many sections in it. If it's at a campus, then you would have, you know, accounting in the morning, uh, business law in the afternoon, and then database design in the, in the evening. So each room has to be capable of holding many different sections. But each section would only be in one room. Um, at DeVry, that's the way it works, where classes are three to four hours long. We just have you come to the campus once, and you get four hours worth of time in one room. So that's a business rule specific to DeVry in this database. And then student section would be many to many because you can take many different classes at once. Some of you probably have two or three, maybe four courses you're taking all at once. Each section would have many students in it as well. So that means you have a many to many relationship. So you're going to need a junction table when you do that, this, that relationship. Now, the last thing to talk about is they go into a lot of detail about optional and mandatory relationships. And I think that's part of what makes that, that uh, matrix confusing is that it's got many concepts in it all at once. The verb phrase, the relationship, and then also whether it's mandatory or required. <clears throat> For this particular lab, I am not requiring that matrix. So I'm going to repeat this. I seem to have to say this multiple times before people believe me. But you have it here in video that I'm not requiring the matrix for submission with this lab. So don't submit it. Nobody will be penalized if they do submit it. But uh, I'm not going to look at it. <clears throat> I'm not going to grade it. And you're not going to get um, penalized if it's wrong. I just think it's confusing. What, what I am going to look at is your Visio diagram and see whether you have your relationships designed properly. And that'll get around a lot of frustration people might feel because there's so many concepts packed into that matrix and it's not necessary. What's necessary is you go through the thinking right here in this table, right here. Okay, That's what's important. Again, don't submit a matrix because I'm not grading for it. If you don't submit one, I'm not penalizing anyone. Provided you get your Visio diagram correct, that's where all the points are. Nothing is attached to 
the matrix. I've said that multiple times because people seem to question why I'm doing that. There's a very good reason for it. It doesn't add to this lab. It actually detracts from your experience. So please don't uh, don't fret over the matrix provided you understand what the relations are, ships are between the tables. Now they talk about optional and mandatory <clears throat> relationships. I also find the way they've done that is also confusing in the lab, particularly when they talk about a multiple key between section and course and that sort of thing. <clears throat> the way I would handle that is just like this. I'm going to go into Visio for a minute. I've created, you start by creating the two tables, course and section. And then we said earlier that each course has many sections and each section is associated with one course. I'm going to take the one end and I'm going to put it on course because that's where it belongs. I'm going to take the many end and put it here. Somehow it's not doing what I want. Light up. And then put it here so that you end up with a foreign key course ID. Now the only relationship that has anything related to mandatory in it is this course in this database that I can see. So we want to make sure that if anyone creates a section with a section ID that there's a course associated with it. It doesn't make sense for someone to say they're creating a class and then you say, well, what course is it? They say, I don't know. Well, that doesn't make sense. I mean, there has to be a course associated with a class or else you don't know what you're offering. So I'm just going to make this required. See that? See how it made it bold here when I'm going to do that again? By default, it looked like that, just regular font, course ID is a foreign key. I'm going to click on required, bingo. Now that means you can't in access eventually. If you make this column required, course ID, it means you can't start a section without having a course ID in it. And that's the only mandatory relationship that you're going to have to think about in this particular lab, other than columns that are primary keys, and that happens automatically. So um, that's how you do optional and mandatory relationships in this lab. Let's go back real quick and see what we did. They give you this monster table. They give you some business rules. You separate all those. You look at this and you determine what all of the tables are that you need, including this additional section table mentioned in the instructions. Then you identify the direct relationships between each entity course section, instructor section, room section, student section, get all these relationships together and then you go about designing your database and I've got you started with this one right here. Make sure for course and section that course ID is required so that you can't enter a section without a course and the rest of it is like a uh, repeat of what we've done in previous weeks but it solidifies your knowledge and it gave you a little less <coughs> um, instruction on this one and that's why I'm helping you get through it. And that's how you get through the week 5 iLab in BIS 245.